the Beijing Army Band, International Work, and Wonderful Books with Wukun Tzu. Stay inspired. So Wukun, it was amazing hearing about your early introduction to music and playing the violin and the clarinet and then to the bassoon. While you were playing bassoon with the Beijing Army Band, you shared how you really wanted to practice bassoon more there. Could you elaborate more about what life was like working as a bassoonist with the Army Band and how you found your path toward playing the bassoon as a career? Right. That's, that's we can, something we can talk about. Well, hello, everyone. Hello, Cassandra. Hello, Richard. Hello, Honor. Certainly. <laughs> Hello, Judy, of course. Thank you for the invite <laughs> for this amazing meeting. I really appreciate Oh, hello, Zhu <laughs> Xuefeng. All right. So we're all here. So I think the, the we can talk about the, which, which you just mentioned is uh, something different uh, because I'm Chinese. And uh, you can imagine I'm now like uh, almost 40 years. And uh, 40 years ago, how China looks like and now is much different. So the, the, the culture is different and the, the, the environment is different. So, um, and uh, that moment, China compared to Western country, uh, for example, American is probably much more different than now. Um, so the classical music environment is very different. So when I was like two, I started violin is because of my father, which is a smoking now in the camera. <laughs> 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 He's now in Chengdu. Yeah. And uh, he played um, trumpet and violin in the, uh, that moment they call it like uh, a band who is a service for the uh, uh, community, which is uh, to promote communist thoughts. And uh, they have this kind of band. They play music, and he's super. Uh, he's super like music. He's a uh, he has good hearing, and uh, very associate with music. So he played trumpet and violin. And why start and two? Because uh, of course he wants. He he has no chance to be, become a musician. Which is uh, he has two dreams. He told me once became a musician or became a cooker. And. Uh, <laughs> he loves cook, which is good for me. And, um, and yeah, and then he, um, because of the multiple reasons, he can be a musician. But he said, oh, maybe my son has my talent DNA. Then he um, he started to let me to study music. So and two 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 years old, and start with violin. My teacher and two years old uh, violin was was his. That moment, he's a very good friend, and also is one of the most famous uh, violin teacher in Chengdu. And yeah, then after two years, uh, I was like, uh, you know, violin, you have to always hold this gesture. You know, I still remember. <laughs> I was so happy. I was like, Daddy, that's boring, and especially for uh, four years. So I, that's my only two years, right? I already four years. I was like, four years old boy. Imagine, you know, it always a. Uh, I want to go out, play, and make noise, not uh, stand there still for half an hour. That's not possible. So, OK. Then, then Daddy said, OK, then maybe we, we think about something else. Because for blow, it's easy, right? If you want to shout, you blow. And it's uh, natural for the uh, young boy like me, which was uh, very energized. So uh, so he, he has another friend. So he has a lot of musician friends, you see. And he has another friend, which is my clarinet teacher, and that uh, he was uh, and uh, introduced uh, for, to me to learn clarinet. So, yeah, he was very good clarinetist, actually. He played in the Chengdu One Orchestra as a principal clarinet for many years, and he has a lot of uh, experience with uh, students. I still remember we have a big class, was like uh, 10 to 12 students he has. Every week we have a gathering and to play together, also private lessons. So it was quite intensive learning uh, environment to study clarinet with him. Because now, I'm now, as a teacher, I can imagine um, to have every student private lesson and also gathering. It's, uh, it's not easy. You know, you have to manage the time with all the students and parents, also myself. 
and besides I'm still playing in orchestra. So anyway, uh, after like uh, three, four years, I was like, uh, he told me that I was really tall. I'm, I'm not that great. I'm, eight, I'm now 183 centimeters. And uh, that moment, I think I was like 170. I was taller than the average in Chengdu. And Chengdu is uh, the city which has uh, small peoples. We have uh, mostly <laughs> small. <laughs> During I grew up, I'm the, always the last line of my class. Always the tallest in, in the older child. So then you are too tall for climate. <laughs> oh, my, you change, oh my, you change to another uh, tall instrument. Okay, no, uh, I don't know because I have no idea what it is. But soon I never heard about this instrument. And and uh, yeah, and he introduced me to his friend, which in orchestra, the another principal bassoon, and uh, I, I start to learn bassoon. This is how I start the very beginning of my career, <laughs> not career, learning steps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. How did you head to the Beijing Army Band, Wakun, and, and what led you to go play there? Yeah, it was uh, um, that moment I was in Chengdu studying the uh, normal middle school and decided to play bassoon. And uh, this one opportunity suddenly come. My dad heard that information from my clarinet teacher, from my clarinet teacher. And uh, oh, this guy is coming from Beijing and he's a uh, uh, recruit uh, uh, band players from Beijing. And uh, you know, that moment was like 19. 1989 or 1990, China is still just open, you know. Um, not like now, now even if, if you are in Zhuhai or in Guangzhou or Shenzhen, you, in Chen, you in Chengdu, you don't feel that I have to go to Beijing. I can also from, I can study where I am born and I can go abroad study, I can, do, I, I can get all kind of information and good teacher in my own city, but that moment is different. All the good teachers, the top teachers, and all the uh, uh, resources are in Beijing. So if you got the chance to go Beijing, then let's go. It was like, why not? So that moment we were like 10 kids uh, in my age. Uh, so uh, we were like, four, yeah, I was 14 years old. That moment I was still very little. Um, 10 kids, there, there's a one, the one, only one bassoon, there's some trumpets, there's trombone, there's clarinet, there's horn player. Um, then we, we take the train together, that one was still train. Not so many people take airplane yes. <laughs> in that age. And uh, we take train like two, I remember there's two days we have to stay in that train to, to move to Beijing. And uh, yeah, that was uh, how it uh, starts. And then, of course, when we go there, we thought like, okay, we go to uh, learn bassoon, we go to learn music, and of course in army, but it's in Beijing, so many resources, right? So many good teacher. Okay, let's go. But actually, when we arrived there, we knew that um, it's more like army and then with music. So army is the first priority, and then it's uh, to be a soldier. You know, uh, if you, I don't know if uh, uh, Cassandra or Richard was a soldier, or, or you, Judy, have you been army then? But I mean, have you been inside army? In, in, you have to abide to the orders from your uh, supreme leader, right? This is the first priority, and then it's rests. So in the army uh, then, my go there is like, you have to learn how to train, you know, how to walk, army way, which you saw on TV. And uh, you have to learn, to, you have to stand, uh, like uh, you have uh, always, uh, you know, <laughs> many, many kind of training, you know. And uh, this is which is not related at all with music. That's making me very sad. This is not what I want. So besides, we don't have private practice room. Where we practice is in a uh, canteen and big hole, very loud. You may not be, and whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you know, you can practice, you know, you, you play one staccato, it sounds like a long note, bang, <laughs> impossible. So, and then you think it looks like um, more than um, 20 players was inside the room. Everybody's uh, bring, play their own instrument. Assume, come on, you can hear nothing inside, besides the treble, and the, you know, 
any kind of loud brass beside it. So I was like so sad. This is I'm, no, absolutely I believe if I have any chance I get. And after several months, I got a chance to do this uh, interview for, for the entrance one conservatory in Beijing. I said, yes, I'm going to try whatever I can to, to get into the conservatory to live here for forever. And I made it. So I changed my life. I, I still have my, and now they already, my friend, which we same time go to army band, they already go, went back to Chengdu, of course. But uh, they were like staying in the army for like uh, almost some people more than 10 years. They stay there. So, oh, this is their choice. I don't mean this wrong, but for me, I can't. It's just, uh, this is not what I want. Mm -hmm. I want just play music, learn bassoon. So one of my favorite quotes from your interview, Wakun, was playing music in Switzerland is like eating yummy chocolate. And right. I know exactly what you mean by this description. So could you share more about how your musicianship and approach to playing music evolved when you studied and worked in Europe and, and in Zurich and just all over the world? Yeah. The, the opportunity to how I go to Switzerland studies because uh, from my chamber music teacher in <laughs> in my conservatory in Beijing. And he is a Swiss guy. He's a Swiss Italian. His name is Renato Bizotto. And uh, you know from the name Renato Bizotto. And uh, he's a he's a very good oboist, first of all. And uh, he's also a businessman now. This is another thing we, we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> and uh, and that moment he said, Hey Quinn, you know, oh, I have a opportunity for you. I said, What? Um, he said, uh, uh, we have a very good teacher in Switzerland for bassoon. I said, oh, yeah. And um, do, you, do you want to go to go there to study and to, to learn what is real music? Of, of course, this is what I'm looking for. Okay, and then he makes some contacts. And uh, he definitely, I think he, uh, he gave me two options, which is in Basel or in Zurich. And I have no idea the teachers you know. I, I, I don't know which one is good. I don't know which one is bad. Oh, anyone. Anyone, if, because I made one CD, which is uh, can, to show how I this Chinese boy plays, um, and then um, he bring this CD to to Switzerland, and uh, he said, okay, the Swiss one, the the Zurich, the Giorgio Mendelssohn, and he really want you to come and uh, to to study with him. Great, and then then yeah, I left China to go to Switzerland. This is a very interesting very important step for me to change my uh, whole life, actually, you know, to, to, uh, to really uh, get in touch. I'm, now I'm thinking, because if, for example, there's Chinese opera, right? Beijing opera. If you want to learn Beijing opera, then you have to come to China, right? But uh, if you want to learn the classic music, you have to go to where it came, came from, like, uh, like Zurich is where many cla classic Composers, a lot of history writers, Richard Wagner or Strauss, they were there. So uh, it's a dream place for, for their music. So, so yeah, I'm lucky. You know, my parents has a ability to send me there because this is a need to not only play right, financially, and I should be able to go there. That's that was a big issue for me. It's not like Europe. You take a train go to, and go to Zurich, and you take a train back to your hometown, and you take back. But for a uh, a boy who played bassoon in China. This is a, a big uh, investment for my parents to, for me to learn music abroad that far. Only the airplane ticket is a, it's a big price. And also the living cost. Mm -hmm. So I, this is, in this point, I'm, saying, I'm very thankful for my daddy who, who is watching this phone now. <laughs> yeah, right. How Giorgio, um showed you how to make your sound come alive. So I was just yeah. thinking about any other kind of realizations or things in your playing that you noticed while you were studying with, um, you know, with Giorgio and, mm -hmm. and, and working in the opera and. Mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. uh, I want, I want to first uh, uh, talk about this. Uh, um, not only this, uh, but what comes to my thoughts is, uh, the differences between Western and the Eastern music, 
to this is a approach which is, for me is a very big different uh, changing you know because the, the the eastern music is more like one line it's a, the music with one line you know, they are beautiful melodies and the, it's important how yourself plays like a good job how they, they play fantastic and really really nice but western music is more like the vertically this system right harmonic system but I was not realized that even I had played many years in my school orchestra, but we don't we are lacking the education of uh, chamber music. I even I played chamber music in, in my school in Beijing, but still the the it was not that important. Was not that uh, deeply touched my uh, whole knowing system of uh, Western music. So after I go go to the yeah, I have a good example. Why well, start with learning with Giorgio? You know, you know Giorgio. Mm -hmm. You know he when he whatever you plays, he plays beside you with mm -hmm. harmonic sound, right? And always we are play one duo. Always you know, whatever play, especially sometimes he bring one one or whatever he play with you duo. So that was a kind of oh yeah, this is the harmony change. How the melody goes with harmony. How I should sound like, even I have a change a little my intonation, you know, you have to learn to be higher and lower and darker sound or brighter sound, and how you catch the moment with uh, two players. I mean, this is a very small example of uh, the differences between West music and it. It's about collaborate. This is uh, which I learned a lot from, from, from Europe, that moment where I study. <clears throat> of course, this is an um, after I go to school orchestra and uh, you know when when we we were in China the school orchestra like we we played the many years I I would play many of principals in there in my student orchestra and we played a lot of Tchaikovsky also some Beethoven but mostly one semester we have only one project and for this project we practice for one semester so what that means people is not ready so <laughs> you go there practice you go there. Uh, learning your parts and uh, watch conductor Jetta and uh, but but in, in Switzerland I went to the rehearsal for the first time I was not ready I was so ashamed and I was like everybody was ready I was like okay so good <laughs> but I, I was not ready <laughs> uh, that that was a uh, conductor look at me at you you can imagine conductors I own this guy I seriously here <laughs> yeah that was the uh, first time my attempt one student orchestra in and you in, in, in say how they tell how it was feels like what was his kind of, okay he's great but uh, yeah he gave me a good listen mm -hmm. for my rest of my life and after that I always uh, have to be ready my parts at least and also you have to watch the party too right you have to study what other people's play so this is a uh, quite different um, you know, I was learning China, the music, and the, the in Western. So you, when you're China, basically you are learning one instrument. And uh, when you are, when you are in, after I arrived uh, Switzerland, I'm basically I'm learning the music system. So learning the the bigger picture. So, so which is uh, much more interesting and much more. It's a uh, it's a uh, bring out my desire for for. This is much more interesting. Well, so many things to learn. Where should I start? Okay, one by one. Da, 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 da. I like it. Oh, I play this note. I play it faster. Play it louder. This is uh, very different. Of course, now maybe China's the school, they're much better. But the back to like 25 years, that's not for sure. Did you notice a, a change in your read making, Wakun, to kind of start changing your sound or, you know, our technique or that you could share with us, um, even from like the shape of your read to scraping more or less, or? I was starting to try to um, get into the read very early when I was in China, while learning with the principal person from the China Philharmonic Orchestra. You already started to learn, hey, Kung, you have to maybe have a look how to make read, how to make scraping the read. And uh, I was, yeah. It's interesting. How do I have time? Then maybe I have a look. Um, I think if you need the rate for me, it's like first important thing is the rate have to follow your play system, right? 
if you play more bite way, then you have to find the, the region which is more biting and, and good for your mouth. But uh, now I think uh, because we, the play system and the play technique is always improving, so the the rate for me is all, also always improving. So it like uh, now I know I'm still learning. I'm still learning. So now I know that now I, now I'm breaking the parts and more taking some small tricks which I don't do before. So in general, my rate is um, <clears throat> if you we have to say to one simple um, concept is. You have to be graduate. You have to really graduate, and uh, not. Uh, some people make a read like <laughs> suddenly one step go down. <laughs> this is not what I uh, learn, or not what not really good to me. And first is graduate about scraping, and the the, the wood has to be uh, really good vibrate itself because about if you talk about material, this is the uh, first thing, right? If in, if in the industry area, first thing is material, material is so important. And then it's about uh, design. So for 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 bastion, for rate, it's the same. First is material. So if it is a bad material, maybe you can learn for. It's nothing good for your playing. You have to drop it. You know? If bad is bad, with good material, you are this good and you achieve the perfect um, goal for your. Read. No. Also, the I think it's very different with a different bassoon. Yeah, why that moment? Why I play the Minish bassoon? And uh, because the bassoon, Minish bassoon, sound is very good sound, very easy to play. So it's uh, the for me the Minish bassoon, the wood is as hard as echo. My experience. So it's it's don't need that if the reed is soft. Uh, if even softer than now, how it should be with Heckle, it still works works well with uh, with Munich. So after I switched to Heckle, I feel like uh, it's uh, quite different. So it's like a beginning, it's like a, I'm, I'm blowing to a wall, this kind of feeling. And after several years and change my rate and how it's gripping, basically I can use a little bit harder rate, you know, harder cane. <clears throat> and with scraping changements, I found this. Uh, now I found my 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 own way to with my instrument now, also my playing system now. So actually, if we talk about it, that is uh, first is very personal thing, uh, and it's very. But uh, there is uh, there's no mysteries. This uh, this technique. Well, Kun, did you find you were making really different reads from playing in the opera and having this you know wide range of dynamics and I'm thinking of the super softs <laughs> in the opera um, and then also doing your solo work and you know mm -hmm. and and recitals and or or was it a read you know style that worked for everything what did you find in kind of balancing your playing mm. that's a good question mm. Mm. if you are in opera you don't need to, that much flexibility on the read First of all, you need a good sound, good intonation, and then it's flexibility, right? Mm -hmm. But you play a solo piece, um, especially you play you play solo in front of orchestra or you play a solo piece. The first thing is about flexibility of the read. The read is able to 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 let you to do any kind of uh, articulation, any kind of uh, dynamic. So that is uh, that's need higher demand of the read. For, for for solo playing about flexibility, but uh, for for the for the opera, if you play opera, because there's a lot of uh, singers behind the view, and you have to play super piano, the really super piano. And after I don't play opera, I don't play that piano. So actually, I'm mad. <laughs> 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 that um, that's it. Mm, that is different requirements. Yeah. Wakun, in your interview, you mentioned a couple of books. Um, yeah, right. That, yeah, I'm like really looking forward to checking these out. So I'll yeah. um, I'll just mention it was uh, they're by a doctor of philosophy, Don Green, and one of them is called Performance Success: Performing Your Best Under Pressure and Audition Success, and Olympic Sports Psychologist Teaches Performing Artists How to Win. 
Yeah, could you tell us why you enjoyed reading these, Wakun? Yeah, because uh, I was, well, I buy this book. That moment I was attending a lot of competitions and uh, the auditions. So um, after you practice, the, the finally you have, you have to bring to, to real life, to, to, the, to the place, the D-Day. So the, it's possible what you prepared, you don't show off that, and that uh, expected how you bring your percentage of your security highest as possible, right? How you achieve this as perfect as to, I think there must be some, somebody there must be somebody study about this. I was and I was searching on Google and I find this book and I immediately bought this on Amazon. I think Amazon I bought it and I read. Oh yes, this is this is what I'm talking about. You know, this is a this is a, this guy. Is a, uh, he's a he's a he's a doctor to, to learn about uh, uh, his study study about uh, perform your best under your under pressure. It just, uh, it just, uh, why I have this, okay, why I have this idea to learn this kind of things back to when I was in academy in uh, Zurich, that moment uh, the Zurich Opera offer us uh, a series of class, which is the hire from, <coughs> from a guy, which is, uh, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> he is about this profession to, to teach the musician. He himself is not a musician, but he gave the uh, tours in, in, in Europe, in, especially in Germany, all the professional orchestras give the lesson to, to musicians to learn how to um, fight with your nervous, fight with your tense, fight, fight with your problems when you play music. So I was learning a lot with from, from him, I forget, I'm so sorry. But, uh, it was uh, very useful for me that moment. For example, I was like, learn that he, he teach you to your body, which can do is much more than you thought. You know, you, for example, you turn your body and you, you thought you can turn just a halfway back, but if you imagine you can do the, you, you, you mentally imagine if you can turn the whole round, you try again, you can, oh, I can turn to you there. So he said, this is a very small example to, to let you know that's it, because our who is limited ourselves is our, ourself. It's not anybody else. So our own mental setting, which is actually most important for our practice, daily practice, also in performance. So we have to first free our mind, and then you practice is much more effective. When you know more things, you are getting more relaxed. It's also kind of a good concept. From him, so so then I will. I'm uh, that moment I still uh, think uh, maybe I want after that I still want to read some books. So I found this performance success and also the audi audition success is there too. So, um, both read, written by Dr. Green, so that was very helpful for me. Yeah, I, I think you can still find them um, a man so in the easily purchase, and then there's a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of things you can, you know, that it's not only read. It's like your personal diary. You can, you can write a lot of things and uh, you take notes and you do your progress. You take notes and after several months, you you, you, you take notes again. So you, they just very defined your feeling. So this is a self-study for me. So which is most important. I don't study other people. I study myself. How nice. <laughs> it's like with journals you know and just kind of yeah writing things yeah, down right. and looking back even a week yeah. where it's like wow well, I've grown yeah, right. so much that's you know? of course yeah you have to always look back so after learning that you always feel uh, uh, not only play but soon also uh, it's, uh, it's change your mind yeah. you are more happy simply yeah. I also do meditations a lot not recent but uh, <clears throat> past Past years, I do a lot of meditation, so it's, uh, it's very, very helpful for myself to clean my mind sometimes. And uh, yeah, it's, hmm. it's within is most important than without for me. Cassandra shared, how often do you get to collaborate or 
or see collaborations between Western and Eastern bassoonists, such as this interview, maybe more performances or master classes, or maybe it's because of distance and proximity, but I have not worked with or had master classes from any Eastern bassoonists yet. It was much more before the pandemic. <laughs> but since the pandemic, everything is more localized now. Yeah, we have my, my orchestra, Macau orchestra, where we are a small town, Macau East, but we are we have we have a lot of cooperation with uh, Western conductors and soloists. Like uh, one top top each instrument they open. Azulini was here, like uh, and Timmerman was here, the piano. Um, a lot of great musician is here. Was was here in Macau. So before the pandemic, and uh, we have a lot of. We also go abroad. We go we go Japan. We go Korea. We go Taiwan. We go mainland China, States, or the Europe tours. Like uh, we were we were attend the Brookna Fest Festival in the Aust Austria in 2018. Yeah. So this, this was a lot of uh, cooperation before the pandemic for Macau Orchestra. <clears throat> also myself, I was playing uh, many times in the in Korea, the KBS Orchestra. So uh, very nice, very good, or very professional orchestra. And uh, the conductor was Yan Levy. He's very yeah, very professional too. A great conductor. Yeah, just uh, we have a lot of. Uh, since before the pandemic, but now, <clears throat> now it's more than like this Zoom meeting. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we're so grateful for these. <laughs> I was talking to Tianwen uh, two days ago. I, we, were, we were talking about. I said I would definitely go go New Zealand after the pandemic to visit Judy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I've been um in all the sessions. I'm just like, please come visit. Uh, you know what? There's uh, every two years there is a Basun Fest in, in in China, which is a uh, host by Lan Song Li. You know, he's a uh, he's a uh, one of, he's a most uh, um, influential Basun professor in China, and. Uh, I was actually I was at the first um, uh, Basun Fest, and uh, which is uh, 2019, which I went with Matthias, and at uh, that moment, and yeah, that was the first time. I think now it's only the fourth or fifth time. Yeah, uh, which was uh, like uh, uh, in July, end of July was the very uh, last time. Just now, it was uh, without foreign experts, but uh, mostly uh, Chinese or who work in China, the uh, foreign good bassoonists. My, Michael Gaza, maybe you know, he's, he, he was in the uh, Prince Basu in Guangzhou, and he's from from the States, but he already went back to States at the end of August, you know, for example. Well, Kuhn, I wanted to ask you about a class or a course in university that you wish had been offered. Uh, I had I had do some master class in China, previous uh, moment, but now I'm more like in based on Zhuhai because enemy we cannot travel right, so a lot of things it was cancelled, but uh, I've had my uh, private uh, students in Zhuhai, which is uh, they're mostly it's like uh, because Zhuhai don't have a conservatory, so mostly it was a uh, uh, mature students they have their own school to there are a lot of business a lot of a lot of business moment with their Chinese, with their English, with the mass, and then they play bassoon. And uh, another uh, small thing I'm doing in Zhuhai is we have one uh, theater, which the theater has a music education department, and we have a <clears throat> youth orchestra there. And I'm coaching there the, the wind band. There's all the woodwinds, also some brass, and like yesterday, I was there for morning to, to we, we, we rehearsed of uh, the, the Denmark Princess March. <laughs> yeah, it was quite fun. Yeah, we, we choose the pieces and uh, to make, make the learning about uh, classic music, yeah, collaborate and play on stage. It, it is a very nice hall. It's a, it's a, it's a it's golden, this looks a little bit similar like the oh, Vienna Fenheim. The, the, that's a, that, that's a gold hole, we call it, gold hole. Yeah. Yeah, 
very, very nice. We always, we even rehearse them inside. Wow. So. Yeah, it sounds beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Could you tell us about your bassoon? I, I was thinking everybody had a dream to play head correct, especially when I was a child and I was like, I mean, I think at that moment, I don't believe I can play head correct. So I, 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 it's a dream, but uh, I won't actually, that's what I was thinking like this. But, dude, in Georgia's class, there's one, we have a friend, and uh, he he decided to be a doctor, a PhD doctor, so not a um, bassoonist, but he ordered one echo bassoon, which is already two years he ordered, and he gave that order number to me, which is a uh, takeover, and he, he he said, if anyone wanted, and I was like, <laughs> Even I don't know how I pay after two years the, the full price, but I said, first take it. <laughs> that moment, in, I think it was 2008, or 2009, 2009. That moment, you only need to wait four years to get it. Now, which is more than 14 years, unfortunately. But that moment was four years. I only need to wait like two more years, then I could get my bassoon. And uh, after I take over this uh, number, I was uh, I attended the ARD competition that moment. During I played the first round, and the, the downstairs was sitting the there's one Chinese. He was a bassoonist in the uh, Washington Washington maybe the orchestra. He was playing the principal bassoon, and he 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 began change his career to to be the violin and the violin both this kind of business. So he was like, uh, he was, but he's uh, still big fan of bassoon uh, activities. That's why he fly from so far from Washington to 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 Michigan to, to attend that competition and to hear it. And uh, after I finished my playing, he said, hey, how are you? <laughs> I was not so satisfied. <laughs> we started to study the conversation. And uh, he, I was thinking, oh, I want one better bassoon, and it's, uh, it's uh, something limited me, and uh, because, uh, um, yeah, but I ordered one, Heko, is been up to two years come, and uh, um, I, I, I wasn't uh, really want to hear, but he helped me, but he, and then he said, okay, maybe I can help you with the, the <laughs> I was like, are you serious? <laughs> and, and then finally, really, he, he, why, why I pick up my bassoon and the, he, he, he transferred money to headquarters. Wow. Yeah, you never know who you'll meet or who, who, yeah, you, you don't know who's inspired, you inspired him, Wakun. So, <laughs> so just, uh, I, I heard somebody say that you never know who is listening in the audience. You never know, you know. So many mm -hmm. people, you don't know what they're doing, right? So you have to do your best. <laughs> mm, <yes. laughs> At the beginning, I didn't like it. <laughs> really, I'm so sorry. But uh, listen, I think the Yiddish, it is so easy. So uh -huh. it's like uh, you are blowing and, and uh, everything is good, you know. Just maybe, if I have to talk about different, maybe Heko is a deliver some father, maybe. But uh, he Heko has a Heko song, which is in the tenor register you feel more singing. Okay, that's it. But but I talk about feeling of blowing Finnish was that moment was very perfect for me. I was very happy with that instrument that moment. Oh, and uh, oh. when I first get my head I was thinking like this is oh, not an instrument. <laughs> I'm blowing to a wall. I, I mentioned about it right at the beginning. So it's uh, very hard to so bam you know it's like it's very long, and uh, of course, this because of me. But uh, the first impress I had from, from my that moment, I just picked up my person. First time I played in, in the Heiko factory, right? In that moment, I'm excited. I do feel that so strong. But when I go to visit my friend in the Amsterdam, and I, he went to work, and I, I, I stayed in his, I was playing again. And I was trying very detailed about this, but I'm like, it's so hard. <laughs> it's just so hard. <laughs> and it took like at least two years to still 
to remain that feeling that uh, Heiko is not easy to play. Um, I think it's related to my rate style at the moment. So I was I had very strong rate style with the, before the Munich and then switch to the Heiko. Oh, he asked what is number of you here? I, I, um, uh, 15, 15, 6, 2, 6. That was my number. And uh, yeah, but now, now after, now it's almost 10 years. Now it's so good. Again, I feel like I can do everything with this instrument. In mm -hmm. any register, it's a uh, response and uh, has good sound. I think I started to like this instrument like after five years. After two years, I feel okay. It's less than this. This like a wall, but it's not yet beautiful. Maybe for here, I, I always hear good comment from my colleague, from from the audience, but I never liked it myself. Mm -hmm. But uh, I started to like myself. <clears throat> it's from after five years. I think. I hope other people feel the same. <laughs> <laughs> How I feel is most important, right? Excuse uh -huh. me, but I need to be enjoying my instrument. This is after five years. But now I'm a big fan of my first. Mm -hmm. Big fan. Yeah. I'm still remember Matthias what he said to me that uh, I think that makes sense. You know, wood is not metal, right? Wood has its own inside the how to say in English the the, the, uh, how the woods go with the small um, the grain the grain of grain, the grain how the grains go you have to learn to first of all you have learned to blow it to make all the things vibrate together with mm. your hair second thing is uh, it itself it changes with your playing system so you know him he know you then you became a perfect human Skinner used to say it takes eight years to play in a heckle yeah. Mm. So I was fast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I also remember Matthias, when he just get his new heckle, when I was studying, he get his new heckle, he wasn't like it at all. He played an uh, old heckle, of course. He was like well, more than 20 years heckle. But he ordered a new one when he get it. He don't, he don't want to play on it. He also, I think he don't have the patience, he don't have the time to work on it. Yeah. Oh, in solo concerts, he's very busy with his solo stuff, so he don't have this space to 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 study on this bus. So mm -hmm. I wish okay. to have a like nine thousand old helco. That would be nice. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> That's probably my dream now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Wakun, for sharing today. Thank you everyone for being here.